Today you will learn the basics of caramel making. The hardest part of this recipe is learning how to say it. Is it caramel or caramel or another way? That's up for you to decide, but let's learn how to make this delicious caramel, caramel sauce, and caramel candies. In a large saucepan, at least three quarts, we're going to add some sugar and some water. You're going to need one cup of granulated sugar, 200 grams, and a quarter cup of water or 60 milliliters. A candy thermometer is your best friend when making caramel, but it is not necessary. You can go by eyeball and the water test. I'll go over both for you. Next, you want a wooden spoon or something that is heat proof. You do not want to use metal because this gets really hot and it will burn you. And then a pastry brush and some cool water to wash down the sides if any crystals start to form. We will go through that in just a little bit. But the first thing you want to do is turn your heat to medium and then do nothing. You do not want to stir it. You do not want to shake it. You want to leave it completely alone. Some people find that adding corn syrup is beneficial. If you want to try that to keep from crystallizing your sugar, add one quarter cup or 60 milliliters. Now, if you do see any sugar starting to pop up on the sides, which is normal, as it starts to boil, just take your brush and brush it down with some cool water. As the sugar starts to melt, you'll start to see it turn translucent. You will see it change from opaque to translucent to then almost clear. As it starts to boil, keep an eye on that temperature. If it starts to spatter outside of the pan, just turn it down a notch. It's just a little too high. You get close when it slows down in the boil. That means the water is evaporating and now you are starting to melt that sugar. You want to keep a really close eye at this point when it starts to slow like this because that's when it will start to turn a golden amber and if you take your eye off it for just a second it can burn. You really want to keep an eye on those sugar crystals. If one little tiny granule of sugar gets into this mixture it will crystallize. Crystallization is basically when it turns grainy and gritty and you have to start all over. You can actually reuse the sugar you just have to add more water and start melting it again. Now when it starts to slow down like this, this means most of the water is boiling out. I want you to take time here and really look for those sugar crystals. Add some more water if you need to. And if you do add more water along the sides, you're going to see it boil back up like this. And then it should slow again. At this point, it's starting to turn a beautiful amber color and I'm going to check it. Drop a little bit of the sugar mixture into the water. It should be a nice amber color and it should harden instantly. Do not handle it right away because you will get burned. When it comes to working with sugar syrup, you want to be very careful. If you get this on your hands, it's going to burn really badly. So have some extra water on hand and stick your hand immediately in cool water and then just keep it in cool water for the next 15 minutes. Let me show you up close what it looks like. This is 310 degrees Fahrenheit or 154 degrees Celsius. We are really close to making caramel now. The temperature you're looking for is between 325 degrees Fahrenheit and 340 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 165 or 171 Celsius. If you want a really rich dark caramel, go to 340 or 171C. That will give you a really rich flavor. If you don't have a thermometer, what you're looking for is just a nice golden amber. It should look like this. It should be a nice amber golden brown. You are ready for the next step. Add in two tablespoons of butter, 28 grams, and then start stirring it immediately. Take care when adding this butter and step back a little bit because sometimes it can spatter up and splash on you and you don't want to get burned. Stir it in and then you're going to add in three quarters of a cup of heavy cream slowly or 180 milliliters. And if you're not using salted butter, put in a half teaspoon of salt or 2.5 grams. Stir it in constantly and slowly to avoid temperature shock. If you shock the temperature too much, it will cause the caramel to split at the end and you'll be a little bit oily or grainy. The trick to caramel is knowing that it can crystallize at any time and it's a very finicky candy. It's not wise to make it when it's humid outside or a rainy day. It tends to crystallize more often on those days, but it is possible to do it because right now I'm in the middle of a snowstorm and I'm having pretty good success. Once you add in the cream and the butter, you can turn that heat back up to medium if you turned it down and then just let it bubble and cook and cook until it starts to slowly thicken like this and you're reaching the temperature of 230 degrees or 110 degrees Celsius. If you don't have a thermometer, what you wanna do is you wanna start dropping some of that mixture into a cool glass of water yet again. If it immediately turns cloudy, it's not ready. What you're looking for is for it to turn into drops, but be thin. 
See how it's turned really cloudy right here? That is not ready. We're going to switch out that water and check it again in a few moments. See that the syrup has thickened up quite a bit and the bubbles have slowed down. We're going to check it one more time and you want this to cool down before you stick your fingers in there or you will get burned. I know I keep repeating myself but this is a really hot mixture and you don't want to take any risk when working with hot sugar syrup. This is very hot and you will get a pretty nasty burn if you get it on your skin. Trust me, it's quite painful. They call it Baker's Napalm for a reason. I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to show you what this looks like. Now normally if you turned off your heat and you have electric or gas, you want to remove it from the burner because it would continue to cook. This is a really good consistency for caramel sauce. You can get it out with your fingers after several moments of it cooling and if you try to press it, it just collapses immediately. At that point, if that's what you're making, you pull it off the heat, you let it sit five to 10 minutes, and then we are going to put it into a heat proof container. Do not pour it right away into even a heat proof container as it can shatter the glass. Another thing is you do not want to scrape the sides when you're pouring it into your container. You can cause it to crystallize if there was any sugar crystals left on the side. So just pour it until it no longer pours and leave the excess. Look how beautiful this stuff is as you are pouring it into your glass. It is so rich and creamy and caramelly. I don't even think that's a word, but it's okay. I think it looks good. It is just the right consistency. You need to store this in the refrigerator and then bring it up to room temperature or warm it in the microwave to get it back to a syrup consistency. But it's so worth the effort. You can easily clean this pan by just letting it soak in some hot soapy water for five to 10 minutes and then washing it. But what I really love about this recipe is if you continue to cook past that 230 mark, 110 degrees Celsius, you can actually get caramel candies. You just keep cooking it until it turns into a much thicker syrup like this, and it's really gonna be harder to stir. You're gonna feel the difference as it gets ready. You will really start to see it slow down in the bubbles, and it will turn a really nice golden color, and you wanna cook it until it's 248 degrees Fahrenheit or 120 degrees Celsius. That will give you a nice chewy caramel. Let's drop some in some water and look at it. It should turn into a nice ball, but it should collapse when you press on it. And when you pull it apart, it'll be nice and stretchy. Pour it into a heat proof pan. I recommend using metal over glass cause glass can shatter. I also like to use aluminum foil or parchment paper and then lightly grease it with oil butter or cooking spray. Do not use wax paper because it will adhere to the wax paper and just get stuck. Let it cool for several hours and do not touch it while it's cooling or you can get burned. Again, do not get burned by sugar candy. Don't rush it, it will be worth the wait. Also, do not scrape the sides, you don't want to risk it crystallizing. Once it's cool, you turn it upside down, you pull off the aluminum foil or your parchment paper and then you're gonna cut it. I like to use a pizza cutter to cut it. It's a lot safer. You can spray it with some cooking spray and it's easier to do. And then you just cut it into bite-sized pieces. And look at this, it's just as stretchy and chewy as the sample we checked earlier. If you wanted it firmer, you would just cook it longer and you would just check it the way we did before until you get the consistency you're looking for. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Here are your ingredients if you wanna follow along. Thank you for visiting us at jacksonsjob.com, and as always, happy baking.